So uh, four years ago, I returned to Peachtree City. That's a very unusual thing to have a pastor return to the same area he had been in. I had been the chaplain at Atlanta Adventist Academy the first time through, and so I uh, came back through as uh, the pastor. And when I got there, uh, we had no lists of high school students, and we had no list of young adults. We had a membership list that was over 400, and I said, there's like 130 people coming to church. Who's the rest of this group? And they're like, well, we don't know. And so I went through, started digging through years, decades worth of names of people nobody knew, or, oh, I remember 30 years ago, you know, I think they went to school together. 30 years ago? Well, have we seen them since? No. And so we started going through the membership, started working on it, and uh, my life got busier and busier, and we didn't really do a whole lot with it. But we did start becoming very intentional in our catching the new. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what's working, but also some of the things that we're still failing at at Peachtree City. So please don't think that Peachtree City's got it figured out. Um, God's been blessing, and God's been uh, spoiling us more than anything, because uh, God sends us some amazing people. So basically, I want to start right where it begins, that very first visit. Now, our church sees a visit as something that you may do on a website, on our Facebook, or if you actually show up at church. That's a new concept perhaps right there for many churches. Um, our website has an average of over a thousand visits from different people every month. In fact, we do Google advertising of our Facebook page. Doesn't cost a penny. You just have to go through and fill out a whole bunch of paperwork to get set up for Google ads. And so we advertise our website. Um, through that, our, all of our sermons are recorded, or most of them anyway, and they are uh, posted to a... Uh, a server, and then those get advertised. Um, average Sabbath, we get 200 people at church. We're really happy with that. If a sermon doesn't get at least 1,000 listens, I know something's wrong. Because right now we're averaging well over 1,000 listens to an audio recording of our sermon online. Google Ad. No. Through, for our website. Um, if you set up your, uh, your website's um, email account through Google, it's part of what they do for nonprofits. Um, unfortunately, they do not do it for schools. We've tried. <laughs> we thought about manipulating that and said, no, let's be honest. So, um, uh, so, so people visit our website. We try to make sure the front information on our website's attractive but honest. That's a critical piece, honesty in our website. Please don't make it sound like you have a thousand member church and there's 30 people showing up. It's really disappointing to the person expecting this wowing experience and it's not there. Um, so, website, Facebook. We use Facebook for all sorts of communication. Any post we make, any email, also get a link is put to our Facebook page. Um, I know that doesn't necessarily attract young adults per se, but what it does is it attracts mom and dad. And then mom and dad tell their young person about what they just saw the church doing. It's um, nearly every week video clips from music is being put up there, um, sermon clips, highlights of information. Um, both through our Facebook and our website, you can sign up for a weekly devotional that I write and also a weekly uh, e-newsletter that's produced every week that comes out on Friday. Um, actually, a few of you in here actually get that because um, you've <laughs> mentioned it to me. And so those things are creating constant information to connect. And we, you know, this is, this, we actually have had to go to the place where we actually pay for a MailChimp service now because the number of emails going out. Um, so my devotional goes to something like 1,300 people now all over the world. Um, and that's great. It's another gospel message sharing. Um, the weekly e-news is to almost a thousand email addresses. We don't worry about who it's to. We're just glad they signed up. 
if they show up at church and they come through either of our two main doors where most people come in, they're going to walk in the door and two greeters are going to be there to greet them. And the moment that one of those greeters suspects that they might be a visitor, they immediately start connecting to get name, to get a visitor packet in that person's hand, and to connect them to somebody else that's standing in the foyer. So that by the time they leave the foyer, they've had at least two people that have greeted them, one that's supposed to and one who just happened to be standing there. Um, perhaps... You train very well the people that happen to be standing in the foyer? No. Because it seems like so often you're standing in the foyer talking about something that doesn't even need to be talked about in church on staff instead of being listening to that introduction. That greeter just barges in. <laughs> um, my wife was the greeter today one of the greeters. So she was very concerned because a young college guy had come in. Um, and so she made sure he got a welcome packet and introduced him not to one, but because she loves doing this and she knows how important it is, she actually introduced him to this young man to four people from four different age groups that will all happen to be in the foyer and made sure one of them took the young man to a Sabbath school class. Um, but most all of our greeters, we've gone through that process with them. They know if it's a visitor, get them a visitor packet, encourage them. We have a visitor information card. Get them to say, hey, fill that out. Get, put that in the offering plate later at church. Um, those type of things. We'll cover that in a moment here. Yep. Y'all always jumping ahead. Of yeah, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> yes. Our church service, Sabbath school starts at 10, worship service at 11.15. Um, one of the unique dynamics is our, because we meet in a gym, our foyer is very small, and we were just discussing trying to, um, we are Adventist, but we do serve coffee. And so coffee is the gathering place in the foyer. And so sometimes that becomes a very cluttered area because there'll be 40 people getting coffee all at the same time in a small foyer. And so we were just literally talking about that's something we've got to fix because it's a crashing point. Um, so, but yeah, we've tried to connect. So you've got these initial where it begins right away. Um, who does it begin with? Well, it begins with that, welcome, that greeter. Um, and then that greeter hands that person off to that next person, whoever it may be, and if it is a young adult, the greeter either notifies me or notifies Brian. And I want Brian to share for a moment here about what happened two weeks after he arrived at our church. Um, you can just share it from right there because this is just a short little piece here. Share what happened within two weeks of you arriving at our church. What was that, two years ago? Yeah, two and a half years ago. Yeah. So two and a half years ago, we moved uh, up to the Peachtree City area from Savannah, and uh, it was our first Sabbath uh, at the church, and um, we got to meet a couple uh, new people there that first Sabbath, and two weeks, I was, two weeks after that, um, I was up uh, in Philadelphia, uh, headed back to work uh, for the week, and um, I get a text message from one of the couples at church that says, we have free uh, Braves tickets. We would like for you guys to join us this week. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to, but um, it, it was just that, that meant so much to us that somebody in the church reached out to us, only knowing us for less than a week maybe at the time, to, to make that point to, uh, to, you know, create that relationship. Um, the family happened to be one of our elders, and his, and their their family is just dynamic that way. But just natural, just well, it's a new couple. They moved here. We're going to go to the Braves game. Why not invite them? It was no second thought, you know. And so that happens a lot. So if it's a young adult, the the greeter usually lets me know, or lets Brian or Allison, our young adult liaison, um, youth young adult uh, ministries uh, coordinators. Let them know, hey, a young adult arrived today. Uh, they're in the fourth row up there. 
Um, you, try to connect with them. Great, we'll connect. By the time they have connected with them, there's probably been 10 other people in church who've already connected and have probably come to one of us saying, hey, did you talk to so-and-so yet? They're new here. It's just the way it's done. I mean, and it connects people. Um, so let's say that young adult, this young guy who came this week that I've already got the info on, um, he filled out an information card. That information card, I will um, email to the secretary, my secretary. She will send out a card from the church saying, we're glad you came. Here's two, three things coming up at church we hope you'll be here for. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you. And she sends it off. I will then take the name, the email address, whatever information we get. I will go out and kind of stalk the person. Well, let's just be honest. That's what it is. And I go out and find out any social media contacts I can find for that person. And I'll reach out to them. If I can find social media contacts, I will. If I can't, I'll follow up, phone call. If I know that it's a cell phone, I'll even go out and figure out whether the number they gave me is a home phone, landline, or a cell phone so I know if I can send a text message or not. And I will connect with them the week following the secretary. So that means in two weeks, they're going to get at least two contacts from the church. If they're a young adult, they'll get a third because Brian typically will follow up or Allison will, depending on who it is. And so within two weeks, they'll have three contacts from the church, whether they ever show up again or not. Now, if they show up a second time, we know we've got them. <laughs> and we're not letting them go. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Literally, I mean, that's our mentality so, that, so we all work together. We all communicate. I mean, there's emails and text messages almost every week going back and forth. So-and-so wasn't here. Do we know why? You know, we've got two, two couples where the, the wives are from Australia. We know they leave. We were discussing on the way up. I wonder if they're, if they're both in Australia right now or what happened because neither of the couples have been in church. Boom, we take care and we, we connect. Now, assimilation, this is where we take some risk. And some churches are okay at taking some risk here. Others aren't. We have a kind of a 30-day policy. If you've been in our church for a month, whether you're a member or not, we're going to get you involved. A month. You'll notice down here, no more than 60 days before an active role. Meaning, if you request your membership transfer and we vote you through, you have 60 days, and you're going to be asked to serve somewhere, some way. Now you go, well, what's the difference in between the two? Well, after 30 days, you might be invited to be a greeter. You don't have to be a member to be a greeter at our church. You just have to know what's going on. Um, you might be asked to collect the offering. Not count it, but you can go along carrying the plate. You might be asked to join a worship team. We've got seven of them, all different age groups. Um, something that some churches really get bothered by, um, some of our own members have had a problem with this. We list all the ministry openings in the bulletin every week. So everything that's open and available is listed. You know who fills most of those openings now? Young adults. It sits there for about three, four weeks, and they keep seeing it there, and it gets sent to them in the email, the church email news that goes out. Here's the list of openings. Here's what's happening. Here's what we need people for. Um, two of our um, high school teachers now, young adults, that thing sat there for six months. I thought I was going to have to go twist arms to convince somebody to teach the high school students. Over the last three months, two, young, two separate young adults came up and said, well, I think I can do that. All right, go talk with the, young, the youth leader, and they'll, they'll train you and get you ready to teach Sabbath school. Um, High school students are now teaching in the um, junior, early teen class. They're teaching in beginners. They're... Why? Because, well, the positions were listed, and they said, well, I think I can do that. We constantly, um, I would say about probably 20% of our greeters are, aren't members yet. 
but they're part of the team. About 20% of our um, worship teams aren't Adventists, but they're part of the team. Um, 60 days. Um, literally, I will tell new members as they join the church from up front, they have 60 days to figure out what ministry they want to be a part of. <laughs> I said, and if you don't let me know by 60 days, we will start assigning you and we'll discover what your calling is. <laughs> and they laugh and they think it's a joke. Until 60 days, Until 60 days goes by. Just ask, just ask our young adult leaders. Allison's in charge of decorating for the church. Not on the decorating team. She's in charge. I am the decorating She is the committee now. But, you know, Brian, he, he thought he was getting by easy because all we originally said was, hey, can you do the computer once a month for us? Do the slides and the music and all that stuff. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Now he's a deacon and he's, he's on, in one of the worship teams. He's uh, on the church board. He's, you know, he's on our personnel committee. We don't do the typical every year, two-year nominating committee. We have a year-round personnel committee that meets three to four times a year to fill openings as they come open, which is beautiful when you've got every 60 days, you know, oh, I've got somebody who needs a position. Um, one, one gentleman, he's, in his, he's retired, just moved to the church, and he thought I was kidding that he was going to... Uh, with the 60 days, and literally day 60, I called him and said, you didn't call me yet. He goes, well, I've been thinking. I said, well, guess what? I already found out what you did down in Florida before you moved here. <laughs> you were the community service director down there. He goes, yeah. I said, guess what position we just had open up? <laughs> I said, guess what position we're going to ask you for? And he goes, well, I've been praying about it because I kept seeing that in the bulletin. I said, well, God's calling you. And you know what? He's doing a great job. We're going out, meeting our nonprofits, and connecting. It's all about being involved. Um, we do the welcome card, the follow-ups. That's part of it. I want Brian and Allison to kind of talk a little bit about how they connect with our 45 young adults in our church. So go ahead and... Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. <laughs> um, no, you got to stand up and turn Oh, around. man. Turn the video. Oh, oh gosh, video. All right. Um, so when we get young adults that come in, um, unfortunately, we weren't there this week to meet um, our new rec newest recruit. <laughs> um, but usually when we have somebody come in, we meet them face to face. We spend some time after church getting to know who they are, making sure they know who we are, see our face, um, know our names. We know their names, what they're doing. By the time they leave church, I know where they live, where they work. <laughs> I mean, we were, I mean, it's not just a, hi, we're Brian and Allison, you're so-and-so, we hope to see you next week. It's a, this is what we do, we want to know who you are. And, um, and that's kind of our main objective is getting to know these people and these young adults um, as people. And um, not just as somebody we see on Saturday. We want, you know, these people at barbecues at our house. We want to meet these people for movies and, and baseball games. And we want to be able to connect to these people um, more than just seeing you once a month on Sabbath if we happen to, to cross paths. Um, usually, Brian's a little bit better um, greeting people up front more than I am. I tend to to do the background things, and he's more, hey, have you seen this person yet? Have you met this person? I'm like, no, but you'll introduce me eventually. <laughs> so, um, so we have, you know, a, a bit of a, a better dynamic. That's how we work. Um, but generally, Brian meets somebody on Saturday, and by Sunday, they're Facebook friends. So it's um, it's easier. I wouldn't... Probably wouldn't add this new guy on Facebook because he has no idea who I am. <laughs> Next week, I'll do that. But um, that's usually how we, we connect is, you know, we're big social media people, and usually a lot of people our age are huge social media people. So um, even if you don't see me at church, I'm seeing what you're doing on Facebook. I'm seeing what you're doing on Instagram. Um, so when I do see you again, you know, how, you know, how was your trip? How was this? You know, I already have ways to connect because I'm keeping up with you 
more than just greeting you at church. So um, that's that's one way we kind of get involved. And, you know, we're always trying to look at new ways. You know, how can we get the crew together? You know, how can we meet, you know, get this couple who's never met this couple but would get really well together? How can we everybody get together to meet everybody else? Um, Because like Pastor Nate said, two of our couples, they're... Australian, so um, one's in Ireland right now, one's in Australia, so it's it's a little bit harder <laughs> to get them together, but um, that is one of our, our main goals, especially for this year, is how can we get together on a more regular basis to create, you know, our own network to, to be able to step up in the church and to be able to become a, a force to be reckoned with within our community that people know who we are, what we're doing, what we're about. And I just want to uh, just bring, bring this up to add on to what she said. Um, I think the big thing about what we've been doing, because we've only been doing this for maybe about a year, and um, it's just being intentional. And I think that's what we, we want to meet these people where they're at and, and know that we care about them, like was mentioned earlier is they they know that they can trust us and they come to us if they need anything and it just it creates that that bond that normally if you just say hi and move on you just don't have that so we've noticed that as we meet these new young adults they keep coming back you know they they like what they see we've we've heard positive comments from what they've seen what we've asked them about the church um we've actually have interest in uh, one of the husbands would like to do communion service or our outreach that we do with our nonprofit. So we're we're in the process of trying to figure out how we can <clears throat> let these uh, young adults know what opportunities there, there there can be for them to serve the church and the community as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I hope you're I hope you're catching on here that it's a team effort. We work together a lot, and there's a lot of discussion that goes on. It's not rocket science. We don't have some fancy plan, but we connect and connect and connect. And I think we've only had, what, two official gatherings that we've invited people to even? Yeah. Most of this is just one-on-one connecting personally and via social media, and that's the way we do it. I mean, it, it, it works. Now, I will be honest. Let's, let's be really honest here. This has worked great for the new people who've moved to our area. You know who we haven't been able to really connect with? Those who were raised in the Beechtree City Seventh-day Adventist Church. Most of them, same age group, gone. And not because they moved away. And so, those of you who are thinking, ooh, my friends that have been in my church a long time, they know you. And that's the hard part. Because they also know all the history. They know the challenges. They know the, dis- the difficulties that are faced. They know what's happened in church in the past. And every church has a history. <laughs> and so, um, while it seems wonderful... Um, we're hoping that our next group of young adults, we've got 11 at Southern right now, we're hoping that group has a much better picture of their home church than the generation before them did. Because the group before them is gone, other than about three or four. Um, But other than that, that previous group's gone. And so when I say we have 45, we do. That's who's actually involved. There could be, there's probably another 40 that are sitting out there that we haven't figured out how to reach yet. Um, so it, as exciting as it is, we look at it and go, we've got a long ways to go with it. Um, I think I saw a few hands, but I wanted to kind of get to this place of recognizing what's good and bad here in this picture. Is there a question or two? Church, and if you want to come back, you know, 
together and decided we're going to personally visit every one of these. And they divided them up. And what they wanted to know was, you know, we want you to come. So here's what we're going to do. They started, they rented a very small <coughs> little church. And they said, this is, this is your church. This is this one. Same faith, same denomination. Yep. This is your church. Come so that you're comfortable. Yep. No dress code. Come so you're comfortable. And they started that with a lot of music. I mean, they would fly out to my husband and I up there every couple of weeks and just have a big sing along. And then they had a, one of those guys would do the sermonette and the Sabbath school, but it was, it was real. It was not taken from a quarterly. It was taken on from what would meet these people. Well, within six weeks, people were hanging out the window. Yeah. And uh, eventually, then that summer, they actually had a what they called a cowboy camp meeting because people could had camp meetings, but they had a tent and they could bring trailers and they had a lot of things for the kids. But did you know what ended up is they ended up building a, this whole group became involved in that community and it, they didn't, the other church still had their formality. Yeah. But there's a place for that. Yeah. And they reached a lot of the community and then people came in that were non adventists that were yeah. looking for something and they felt comfortable. Right. Um, and it was really neat when we had the, uh, the conference president came out in blue jeans and his cowboy shirt and cowboy hat and sang a song. There you go. I mean, yeah. because then they saw him in a different way. Exactly. Yeah. And I just think that this is a really, we've got to reach the ones yeah. that are out. Yeah. There. Yes, definitely. Any other questions? Yes, visitor packet. I was, I was waiting to the end. Let me tell you about that visitor packet. So visitor packet, our visitor packet includes a list of all of our major outreach ministries. So we have a homeless ministry. We have nonprofit ministries we co um, collaborate with. We have uh, community services. Um, we have pathfinders. We have a church school, adventures. All those are listed, plus the head deacon, head elder, the pastor, and the secretary. So all their contact info is listed on, on a page that's in that visitor packet. Um, a um, flyer for the school is included. A, uh, a map of the facility, where everything's at, where all the Sabbath school classes are. They also get a list of all the Sabbath schools with a description. Um, is this a quarterly class? Is this a class that's going through a book? Is this a class that's just taking the hot topics of the day? What is it? Those are all listed. All the children's divisions are listed where they're located. Um, all of that's included. A welcome letter from me. I have, there's a little letter in there welcoming them to the church, inviting them to fill out their um, connection card, as we call it. Um, that's pretty much everything that I think is in the welcome packet. Then when they request to join the church, then they get a member packet, which includes a history of the church, um, how to become involved in the ministries, what more information about each of the ministries, very detailed out so that they know what homeless ministries means, what joining Pathfinders means. Um, so they get additional information with that, as long, along with the picture directory and all of that if they become a member. So, yeah. so, Nate, I'm wondering if you could take um, a section of your website or something and post what you actually have in there, maybe hide it from everybody else, but so this group could access oh, it? to see what to what's see what a, you do? Yeah. That way we could actually see it. Yeah. Because the stuff you're talking about sounds good, but in my mind, I'm going, well, now how would that look? Yeah. And not that you would totally imitate that, but yeah. it could give ideas spark. Would that be helpful to you guys? Yeah. yeah. I could pull together the stuff. So if I'll you pull it together... i have to request it from my secretary and stuff because I get to vision and dream and then I turn to my 
we, we have two part-time positions, a secretary and a media relations person. And the media relations person does all the design work stuff. And so I just go, hey, I think we should have a handout that has this. Can you get that ready before next week? Yeah, I think I can. And so she takes care of it and sends me an email. And I go, yep, that's what I needed. Can you do 200 of them? And so some of these things I'll have to well, once, track Well, once down. you do, yeah. get it to me and I'll I send will. it out to the email yep. list. We'll do that. Um, we yep. can Definitely. make sure that happens. I think that would be more helpful than just hearing about it because when yeah. I hear about it, I'm a visual person. I want to see, okay, what would that look like? And I didn't know if that would be helpful to you as well. Yeah. Um, so the one question, you know, because we have these discussion questions, this is a very short discussion question, but it has a very long process. I want you to go through and make a list. And it'll be in two lists. One is your current attending High school, and I'm going to say add high school to this because in our smaller churches, oftentimes this goes together. High school members. Now, you may not know, they may, you might not have seen them <laughs> in a long time. But are they on the books? If you know that, it may be something you need to request, and this may be something you can't finish today. You may need to go home and ask for <laughs> a copy of your membership roster. From, from your pastor. He can access that very easily for you. Um, a list of all your high school students and young adults up to at least age 30. You can fudge it a little bit farther up if you'd like. Um, Make some of us feel a little better then. We're not so far away from being a young adult anymore. I'm so far over the hill it doesn't matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, make a list of all that are on the books and then also add to that list the others that you know should have been on the books at some point. And then make a list of who's actually showing up. Because they're two different groups, obviously, aren't they? One's the whole group, and one is just the ones that are showing up. Don't forget the ones that are showing up. They're going to be the ones that make the greatest impact on getting the ones who aren't there to come back. And so find, create those two lists as best you can, and take back a challenge to them is really where I would say to go with this, is get those lists and start figuring out how to use them. Uh, we'd still be back at probably 15 or 20 if I didn't have Brian and Allison already on board because I wouldn't have the time to track down everybody and continue to follow up. So um, that would be my... Okay, take about 15 minutes here at your tables and talk about that if you are... From the same church, if you're not, uh, just pretend you are, and uh, no, just see if you can just out out of your out of your own mind, just start listing people. Uh, even if it's not a complete list, if you can just start listing um, those that you know should be there that aren't, those that are there, and uh, just see how long your list can go. And if you got somebody from your church with you, you guys can kind of talk back and forth together. And um, sometimes if you have two or three groups in your church, you guys can compare notes and say, oh, yeah, we forgot those guys. So about 15 minutes, go.